What's up YouTube, Oliver from Tech TV here. Today I am giving you my review of Fantastical 2. This is a calendar application for Mac OS X. It's available in the Mac App Store and also directly from uh, Flexibit, who is the developer's website. Currently retails for £29.99 as of the time of filming this video. It also has iOS apps available for iPad for £7.99 and there's an iPhone with Apple Watch app for £3.99. I think it's a little bit pricey because if you buy all three apps it would cost you £41.97 which is nearly £42 which for calendar is quite pricey even just for the Mac app alone £30. I do really like it though and you'll see when I start to give you some um, you know, demonstration of it exactly why and if you want to just try this out if you don't even want to take my word for it there is a 21 day free trial available directly from the Flexibits website I'll put all the links in the video description so you can get straight to that. They also offer, I think it's around about a 10% student discount if you email them from a valid student email address. They also do provide volume licensing through the App Store volume licensing programs. So let's jump straight into the application itself. This is um, what you're mainly presented with when you launch the application. My favourite view is the week view. And um, just so you know, I've created a calendar set. I'll talk about those in more detail later on. Uh, where I put a couple of calendars and a reminder list in that I've created just quickly from scratch for the demonstration for this video to get give you an idea of what a busy calendar might look like. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I've only done it for one week. Um, and you can see a quick screenshot on the screen. This was from the uh, from Flexibits. This is a screenshot of what it could look like if you have the calendar full of events. But let's just get it, you know into what the week view looks like. So you've got these uh, colours. There's the orange colours work. The green colour is a home calendar. Um, in the week view, you've got the kind of timeline, and you can actually set up so you, all the events appear up here, and you can set up your working hours. So, as you can see, the bolder horizontal lines appear between 8 am and 6 pm, and then it's sort of a bit fainter outside of those hours. And you can customise which days of the week and which hours you want it to show. And as you can see, there is a, a red horizontal bar which uh, will indicate the current time, and a red dot which indicates which day of the week we're currently at, which obviously is Wednesday, also indicated by this blue circle. So the events themselves, if the duration of the event is long enough, it will fit all the information it can, such as the start time, the event name, and also in this case as well, if you put in location details, it'll give you location details. And if you actually add, um, I'll show you, if you double tap on an event, it'll bring up the full details anyway. And if you added in a location there, if you typed in an actual location, it will search the uh, Apple Maps database and it will actually be able to bring you up uh, an Apple map of where the actual location of the event is, which is quite useful. Another way without having to double click to view sort of details about the events is this sidebar here. So first you can see that for, and I've got it set up in the options, I'll show you how to change this, that I want the current selected day only to appear in this view. But you can have the sort of show the title of the event, the location, and the duration. It's all obviously in uh, chronological order, so it's like an agenda for your day that you can see all at once, which is really useful. And if I go through for the whole week, if you hover over one of these uh, dates, it will give you the list as well. So without you having to click about to see what I'm doing tomorrow, it will give me the list of everything and all the details are on there. Uh, Wednesday, and I've also added a couple of reminders in there. Um, so let's just go into this one. So there's reminders will only appear in the sidebar, they don't appear in the, the week view. However, you can uh, view them for a certain day if you give the reminder a due date. They'll only appear in this side menu here if you give them a due date. If you don't give them a due date, the only way to view them is to click on the reminders icon down here and all the reminders appear all at once in that list. Just to give you an example, it's now almost 3 o'clock. The two events that happened previously are greyed out. And the event that's still to go shows up in quite a bright colour so you can quite easily see for a certain day what's happened already and what's still to go. Let's take a look at some of the other views that are available. We'll start with day. So in the day view it gives you two columns. It gives you the actual timeline for the day, for that day only. And then it also gives you a second column which gives you full details for each event. If you click on a certain event in the timeline column it brings up the details here so it'll give you any information. So for example the title I haven't given you of this because it's not relevant. The start and time and end time and date, what calendar it's on, you can also choose to set alerts. 
click on the little arrow there and you can add invite these. So if you enter their email addresses, just like on an iCloud calendar, add a URL. So it might be an important website you want to note down there. And also you can add some quick notes. Let's go to the month view. So again, um, this is my month view for the example calendar. You can now see a screenshot of what a very populated month view could look like if you were quite busy. Back to my month view. Um, so it will show you all your events that are happening on that particular day. If you, again, just tap on one of the events on a certain day, it highlights it in the sidebar and it'll bring up the list of everything for that day. Because the squares are quite limited in size, it'll just say four more dot dot dot. There's a little coloured um, sort of bullet point beside each one to indicate which calendar it's on. If we now have a look at the year view, this is one of my other favourite views in this application. I'm just going to go to a random day just so you can see this without it, you know, because when you click on a day, it enlarges that square so just so it doesn't interfere. A red square indicates you've got a large number of events on that day, so you're busy. Um, a blue square indicates it's the current day. A sort of yellow square with kind of faint writing indicates there might be only one or two events, so you're not too busy. Um, Obviously a white square indicates there's nothing happening on that day. I'll show you a view of this, bring up my calendar, and as you can see this could look great when you've got quite a lot of events over the whole year. And that can be really powerful for you know, being able to see how busy you are on a certain day, it, or you know, in a certain month, how particularly busy you are with, with tasks and that kind of thing. Uh, and one other view, it's sort of the final view, I'm just going to take this back to week is the mini window. Now this is something which you can access from the menu bar. This mini window comes up and by default this will stay on top of anything you're on. So just to show you, if I open Safari here, that still stays on top, which is useful if I was, you know, having to browse a web page and I want to check my availability. You can type up in this bar here um, to create a new event and you can use the search for example if I have a bike ride or whatever, it'll, you know, it'll give me Every time I've got a bike ride or a meeting, it'll show me every meeting I've got. You can also use that same hover over menu. So if you hover your mouse your cursor over a certain day, it'll give you a list of everything on that day. And if you just tap on that particular day, you get the full list as well. And you can also open up the reminders list as well. And you can switch between calendar sets down here, and there's some sort of settings and that kind of thing uh, available down there. So that's all of the sort of different views you have available. I'm going to show you what things you can adjust in the preferences because it's so flexible, the amount of different features you can turn on and off in this. So if you go to preferences, let's start in general. You can have it open automatically at login. You can set which default calendar and reminders list you want it to come onto, and also the default event duration. So if you normally have events that last one hour, when you type in a start time, it'll by default make it last for one hour. If you also, for example, might want to just have calendar set up for work between Monday and Friday. You can have start week on Monday, and if you have sort of seven days, it'll show Monday to Sunday, obviously. Five days, it'll show Monday to Friday. So in your week view, and that only affects the week view, by the way, in your week view, you can have it set up to show exactly the working days and hours you work for your work calendars, so you, you know, it keeps it streamlined. However, one thing worth pointing out is that whatever changes you make on here are for every calendar set. So mini window keyboard shortcut, if you press this combination of keys, um, that will allow you to open up the mini window, which is using keyboard shortcuts. So, uh, and the mini row icon at the moment obviously shows the current date, uh, which is the 12th of August. Yeah, so you can also have it show date and weekday, such as WED and 12 in the menu bar, as you can see here. And you can also have day and month, so it'll show Aug 12, so you can see the 12th of August. Uh, so appearance, there are a few things you can do here, so you can hide the menu bar icon. Hide fantastical in the dock, so you can also hide the dock. You can also show the uh, list shows, selected date only, so this is the sidebar list down here. I prefer selected day only because I think it gets too clipped otherwise, but you can have selected day next day, so it shows today and tomorrow, or you can have all days. So what that basically means is you get a continuous scroll through any day when you've got an event, it gives you, you know, a continuous scroll. Um, you've got list text size, so for example, if you prefer smaller writing, you can do that. If you've got lots of events, I just have my set of normal. If you prefer, you can have larger writing. Sort reminders by priority and due date. That means that basically, when you have different reminders in the sidebar, if you have a reminder which is low priority and one which is high priority, the high priority one that will appear above the low priority one, but if you have a due date and time, so they have it set for tomorrow at three o'clock, and then you want tomorrow at four o'clock, the one which is due first or appear first, and that kind of thing. You've also got this kind of option 
show when week events end. If you uncheck this, it will only show the start time by default. So, for example, in, in this sidebar here, you'll only see 9 o'clock. You can show week numbers, which means you get the calendar week, so it's like week 33 of you know, it's like 52 weeks in a year. And you can show decline events, so if someone invites you to an event and you've declined it, you might want that to appear anyway, so you know what's happening. Show map for locations, again, if you type in an address of somewhere, it'll bring up a little Apple Maps map of the location. And obviously completed reminders in the list, if you don't want them to appear, you can get rid of them. I like them to appear, but it means they'll just be greyed out, they're ticked off, but uh, you'll still appear on each day anyway. Colour menu bar icon, you can also have a light theme, which basically means this sidebar will be a light grey colour rather than um, the dark colour, but I, I prefer the dark theme to be honest. Next uh, option that you can adjust is accounts. I'm not going to show you that because obviously it has all my personal account information, but instead of showing you accounts, I'm going to talk about how it links into iCloud, like I said I would do earlier on. So because this is a Mac app and iOS, it's, it only has apps for Mac and iOS at the moment, and it's primarily designed to work with iCloud, see so your iCloud calendars and reminders. And as a result of that, if you have your iCloud calendar set up, obviously if you create an event in Fantastical, that will appear on your regular iCloud calendars. So on your iPhone and iPad, even if you don't get the app, the standard calendar app on your iPhone will show the iCloud calendar events you've created and reminders, and as well, you set alerts on those events, they will also sync and appear on your iOS devices and your Mac. And because it's all iCloud, it also links in with your notification center. If you have calendar turned on, you create an event in Fantastical, by default it will appear in the calendar in a notification center in the today view. Even though Fantastical has its own today view widget, I just find it's a duplicate of the calendar widget, so I just prefer to use calendar and I would go up to the mini window up here if I needed to. Um, so let's move straight on to calendars. I've created two calendar sets. My standard calendars are all my personal calendars that I use, um, reminders lists and that kind of thing. And my calendars for video, as I say, I didn't want to show you all personal stuff, so I made a couple of sample calendars. I put like another home and work calendar on there and another reminders list. You could set it up however you want. So you might want to have work calendars on a work calendar set, home calendars on a home calendar set. For example, within work, you might want to have reminders, meetings, tasks, um, you know, site visits, planning, you know, whatever, as a different calendar so you can have them in different colours. And then the easy way to switch between them is just to use this selector down here where it says calendars for video. You click on that and it just brings up all your calendar sets. And you can have a calendar set automatically activate at a location. So for example, you can have a calendar set activate automatically when you're at work. That is really handy. And then when you're at home, it would activate the home calendar set just by knowing where you are. Alerts, not many things you can change in here, but it just says, for example, for a time and event, you can choose what kind of alert you want to appear. So if you have a message, it will pop up as a, a notification. Advanced, there's not very many things. You can just choose to open maps in Apple Maps or Google Maps, and you've got a time zone override and an update allows you to check for updates. Now, one last thing I'll show you is how you can actually create an event. So if you just click on a plus up here, there's various ways to do this. The, you know, the, the first kind of straightforward way is just to type the event name in here. By default, it will be an all-day event on whatever day you're selected in the sidebar. This appears down here because you can actually click on the date. So if I want this to be tomorrow, if I click on that date instead, it will move my calendar to that date. You can also go, um, you know, I'm not going to make it an all-day event. You can tap here, calendar, little mini calendar window appears. You can select specifically what date, so Thursday 30. Time, so I'll make it 10, and if you type in 30, I want it to end on the 30th, and then if you click into the time on the ends, it will tell you duration. So if I know it's a two and a half hour event and I select two and a half hours, by default it will make it finish at 1 pm. Calendar that you can then choose, you know, that might be a home event, you can even put that there, give yourself an alert five minutes or 10 minutes before. Um, you can choose a custom repeat like I did with lunches, so that's quite useful. And then you add invitees, if you type email addresses in there, it will email them to say they're invited or give a push notification. If they also use Fantastical or iCloud calendars, it will give them a notification saying they've been invited to your event. You can have a URL 
um, and notes. Another thing you can also do to really quickly add an event, if you type in the uh, date in short form, so if I want to make this on Thursday, if I put 13 slash 08 slash 15, it knows that's the start and end date. If I then type in a start time, so 10, and I want that to finish at 11.23. It's important for times, by the way, that you use colons. I should have pointed that out rather than dot. And then I can type in the name of the event itself. And then I can obviously come over here and add my location and anything else. Similar with reminders, if you click on a reminder, I'll just take out the end time because it's not applicable to reminders. If I want this to remind me at 10 o'clock, I'll put the date and time and name of the reminder. As I say, you can just drag the slider to the tick for reminders. It will automatically remind you on a day at 10 o'clock. You can pick your list of reminders, and then if I add the reminder to my list, it gives me three exclamation marks. Uh, and you can right click on things so you can really quickly switch calendars, duplicate, email the event to someone, and with a reminder, you can change the reminder lists and duplicate and delete reminders. Um, so that is pretty much all of the main features in the app. Uh, I've tried to give you a quick overview. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope it's been useful. As I said at the beginning of the video, it is a bit pricey, but I think it's a very, very powerful app, which hopefully you have seen through this video. I highly recommend it, to be honest. It's well worth £30 because you'll get lots and lots of use. When you think how much it costs for a decent year diary for one which is like day per page, you can be paying like £15 at least. If you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with me by leaving a comment below. Or you can always use the Facebook and Twitter profiles at Tech TV Updates on Facebook and on Twitter. Please thumbs up the video if you found it useful and you liked it. For more videos coming your way very soon, please click subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.